Today we're taking a look at the AMD RX 7600, and more specifically, the PowerColor RX 7600 Hellhound. This is basically my first video card review. I've had this card for a little while now, and I really did genuinely like it, so I wanted to share the gaming and testing results. The ARC 7600 GPU features 2048 stream processors, 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, which operates at 18 gigabits per second. As for this Hellhound that I have here, there is actually a slight pre-overclock on the core. The game clock is rated at 2280 megahertz, with the boost clocks extending to 2695 megahertz. Unfortunately, AMD did design the RX 7600s to only utilize 8 PCI Express lanes instead of all 16 despite having PCI Gen 4 support. What does this mean? Well, if you're watching this video in the future and you want to run the RX 7600 on an older system with PCI Express 3.0, you're going to end up taking a performance hit unfortunately. So ideally, if you are looking to pick this video card up and you have an older system, you want to make sure it supports at least PCI Express Gen 4. The memory interface on the 7600 is 128 bit, which is okay for an entry level card. As for the video display outputs, we have one HDMI 2.1 port and three total DisplayPort 2.1 ports. But there is a caveat, you can only simultaneously use any two of the three display ports actively. Now that we have the high level specs out of the way for the 7600, let's take a look at some synthetic and gaming benchmarks. I'll be pairing the RX 7600 Hellhound with the Ryzen 7700X on an ASRock X670E PG Lightning motherboard with 32GB of G-Skill DDR5 6000 MTS CL32 memory. Being that TimeSpy is a synthetic benchmark and it's a little bit older these days, the 7600 pretty much scores well in my opinion. The test passes averaged overall scores of about 11,550 points in this configuration, with the GPU score averaging about 11,250 points. The CPU was generally speaking right around 13,700 points. In switching over to Speed Racer real quick, the RX 7600 managed to hit about 2,050 points on average, which pretty much makes sense for a card in this performance category, especially given the state of ray tracing on AMD. I think that's pretty much enough for the synthetics. Let's take a look at some gaming. For Cyberpunk, I tested 1080p, 1440p, and 4K at low, medium, and high with no upscaling enabled for the built-in benchmark. For the 1080p low test, this card is more than enough, coming in with an average frame rate of 142 FPS. In switching that to the medium preset, which does strangely have some of the high visuals selected, but that's the way the benchmark is. Anyways, the card tested right around the 113 FPS mark on average, not bad. As for going to the high preset, I saw about 95-96 FPS on average. For the 7600 at 1080p, I would definitely run Cyberpunk at high quality. In switching over to 1440p though, I saw about 96 to 97 FPS on average for the low quality benchmark. When I switched that over to the medium quality benchmark, that actually dropped quite a bit down to 72 to 73 FPS. As for the high preset, I was seeing about 60 to 62 FPS on average. If you're willing to turn on FSR, you can definitely get more out of this card at 1440p, even on the medium and the high preset. Sets. Generally speaking, I don't turn on FSR unless I really need it in order to get a more playable experience though. Anyways, moving on to 4K, things start to get a little bit tougher on the RX 7600. It's not really a 4K card, but I was interested anyways to see how it would do. For 4K low, I was averaging about 47 to 48 FPS, but the lows or the frame time spikes were really starting to get noticeable and honestly a little bit distracting. As for 4K medium, well, it's not better. It's basically 35 FPS on average, and we're definitely getting some more noticeable lows. As for 4K, well, this benchmark is really a science project. The system averaged about 26, maybe 27 FPS. Even with FSR enabled, 4K is really going to be a stretch on the 7600, I think. Next up, we have Final Fantasy XIV. This game is relatively popular, and it's a bit easier to run on most graphics cards and systems. For the 1080p desktop standard preset, we're looking at a benchmark score of about 29,692 points, a solid experience. When switching over to the desktop high preset though, we definitely increased the visuals, and we saw about 23,639 points, 
Interestingly enough, I ran the 1080p maximum benchmark a couple of times and it pretty much produced the same score as the desktop high setting. We were looking about 23,600 points on average. 1080p was very easy on this card. As for the 1440p desktop standard preset, those benchmarks averaged about 23,200 points. So quite a bit lower than 1080p low, but very playable. As for the desktop high preset, this benchmark averaged about 16,500 points, which is quite a bit lower but the increase in visual quality was a nice bump. As for the 1440p maximum preset, the system averaged about 15,400 points, so it's still a very good overall experience. So let's take a look at the 4K benchmarks. When you run this card in 4K, you can definitely run Final Fantasy XIV in 4K on this card, but you're definitely going to be looking at lows or frame time spikes that are probably going to be noticeable during gameplay. The 4K desktop standard preset averaged just over 12,100 points between the runs, whereas the desktop high preset came in at about 7,300 points on average. With the range of the 1% and 0.1% lows widening here and becoming a little more frequent, it's not going to be a great experience but you could definitely get by with it, though I would probably stick to the desktop standard preset if I played in 4K. Lastly, we have the 4K maximum average, and that was about 6700 across the runs. It does work, but I probably wouldn't actually choose to play at this resolution and quality. I would definitely target 4K low quality, with maybe some of the settings turned up, or more realistically, I would probably just stick to 1440p, medium, or high. Now for Red Dead Redemption 2. I ran low, medium, high, and ultra for this benchmark, and all of the benchmark runs for Red Dead Redemption 2 are in Vulcan. And looking at the low preset at 1080p, the RX 7600 had no issues with averaging over 170 FPS. This game is a little bit older, and the 7600 is well suited for it at 1080p, so no surprise there. And moving up to the medium preset, we saw an average of about 165 FPS, and with the high preset, and the average did go down to a about 130 FPS. If you really want to crank that 1080p preset all the way up to Ultra, this is definitely going to take a chunk out of the overall performance, but it's definitely still playable. I averaged about 78 to about 80 FPS between the tests. Now, switching to 1440p with the low preset, the card was averaging about 130 FPS across the benchmark runs, whereas the 1440p medium benchmark was averaging about 115 to 117 FPS. Continuing on to 1440p high, these benchmark runs averaged about 95 FPS with an overall decent experience. The Ultra preset did seem to run okay on the card at about 64 FPS, but the frame time spikes are definitely in there, and you're probably going to notice. Whether or not you can look past them for running 1440p Ultra, well that's kind of up to you, and I might turn on FSR for 1440p Ultra. And looking at the 4K low benchmark for the 7600 in Red Dead 2, I averaged right around 70 FPS, but those lows or frame time spikes are definitely getting noticeable. 4K medium averaged about 62 to 64 FPS across the runs. Again, the frame time spikes are getting a little more noticeable, and the game experience just kind of becomes a little less enjoyable. Some kind of upscaling is really going to be required for the RX 7600 in 4K for Red Dead. I would probably only run FSR quality though. As for 4K high, we saw about 52 FPS on average, and of course there were some frame time spikes. Moving on to the 4K Ultra test, this is really a test for science. I just kind of wanted to see how it would do. The card averaged about 39 FPS, but it was essentially unplayable in my opinion. You're gonna have to enable FSR if you want to try this. Next, we'll take a look at Horizon Zero Dawn. For the 1080p original quality preset, we're looking at over 170 FPS on average. Basically, not an issue for the ARC 7600. The favor quality preset saw that average decrease to about 147 FPS, but the visual upgrades were definitely worth it here. Even with the ultimate quality preset at 1080p, we're still looking at over 120 FPS on average across the benchmark runs. Bumping that resolution up to 1440p though, the original preset, we're looking at about 112 FPS, so you can definitely tell there's a little bit more load. Switching over to the favor quality preset, we averaged about 95 FPS, which is still pretty solid. The 1440p ultimate quality mode saw about 90 FPS on average, and we're starting to see a couple of occurrences of the frame times peaking or spiking. You'll probably notice it here and there during gameplay. Switching over to the 4K quality preset, we're averaging about 55 FPS, 
and it's below the Magic 60 number, so people will have opinions about that. The game is definitely playable at 4K original quality, but you're definitely going to have dips below 50 and sometimes into the 40 range. For me, I'd probably stick to 4K original, or I would honestly probably just play the game at 1440p. Switching over to the 4K ultimate quality, we did manage 45 FPS on average, but it wasn't really what I would call playable or enjoyable. There's definitely some really low lows and some frame time spikes here. I think upscaling is definitely going to be a requirement to run Horizon Zero Dawn in 4K on the RX 7600. So let's take a look at the RX 7600 in Hogwarts Legacy. Specifically, the benchmarking I'll be doing is running around in Hogsmeade, as it seems like this is a pretty intensive part of the game. At 1080p low, I was getting about 158 FPS on average. Pretty good. When I bumped up that quality to medium, obviously more visual quality in the game, and the average was right around the 145 to 146 FPS range. When I reran the benchmark test with the high settings enabled, we were looking about 110 FPS on average, especially where the crowd density was largest. Switching over to ultra quality, we were able to stay in the 80 FPS range, but you can start to see when you're in busier areas, some frame time spikes. It wasn't too bad, but they're definitely there. Moving on to the 1440p low test, the system averaged about 110 FPS on the run, which I think is pretty good. The 1440p medium test averaged about 100 FPS, but the lows and the frame time spikes were definitely getting a little bit more noticeable. I would honestly say this is pretty much the limit. You're going to want to turn on FSR if you're looking at 1440p medium or above. I think it just makes sense. 1440p medium testing saw about 70 to maybe 80 FPS. It varied across the runs, but like I said, you're going to see some more frequent frame time spikes. 1440p high saw an average of about 75 to 80 FPS. It did vary a bit between the runs, but we're definitely going to see some more frequent frame time spikes. As for 1440p ultra, we did get 60 FPS on average, but it's not really going to be that playable. You're definitely going to have some low lows and some really noticeable frame time spikes. I wouldn't really choose to play 1440p ultra on the RX 7600 without FSR enabled. Even then, I would probably consider mixing some of the high and ultra quality settings. Moving on to 4K low, we're looking at about a 60 FPS experience, but again, you're definitely going to notice a couple of those frames getting rendered really slowly. 4K medium averaged about 54 FPS, but we're definitely getting some crazy frame time spikes. I would honestly call this like on the verge of unplayable. You need FSR here. At 4K high, the system was in the 40 to 44 FPS range. Again, really Really choppy gameplay, frame time spikes, you're not going to end up playing this. Even with FSR quality, it's debatable. You might be looking at FSR performance. 4K Ultra, we're looking at about 25 to 29 FPS across the benchmark runs. I definitely would not play 4K Ultra on this card. It's not really a 4K card. You might be able to get away with FSR quality or performance, but honestly, I would just scale the resolution down or play low. Up now is Watch Dogs Legion. 1080p low was a simple task for the RX 7600. The benchmark run averaged 166 FPS on it. As for the 1080p medium benchmark, we didn't really see too much of an impact. The average of the runs was about 160 FPS. As for the 1080p high testing, the system saw about 100 FPS on average, and the 1080p ultra setting brings the average down to about 74 FPS. Not bad for 1080p, but let's take a look at 1440p. For 1440p low, the benchmark run on the 7600 averaged about 130 FPS, which I thought was a pretty solid frame rate, even though it's low. And then looking at the medium test, we're looking at about 115 to 117 FPS on average. For the 1440p high preset, the system was averaging about 100, 101 FPS, but you can definitely start noticing really low lows or frame time spikes. 1440p ultra was pretty hard on the GPU. We averaged about 53 FPS. We definitely had some big frame time spikes. You're going to notice this while you're playing the game. Kind of like Hogwarts Legacy, 1440p is definitely more doable with FSR quality enabled though. 
As for the 4K Watch Dogs testing, the low preset averaged about 66 FPS, and we had a couple of frame time spikes here and there during the run. 1440p medium averaged about 55 FPS, but those frame time or differences do get a little more frequent. 4K high averaged about 50 FPS, but again, this wasn't really going to result in an optimal experience. 4K Ultra averaged about 30 FPS, but this is definitely not playable. You would definitely need upscaling, and even then, I don't know exactly how well it'll work out. But with that being said, since the RX 7600 is definitely more on the budget side of a GPU, I think this is pretty respectable. During all of the testing, the card was usually using about 160 to about 170 watts. I measured this in the MSI Afterburner and Riva Tuner software. I would also say, even in the OC mode, the GPU was relatively quiet during gaming. The PowerColor Hellhound heatsink is actually pretty good for a GPU of this size. I think it's well suited to a card that uses this much power. I didn't really need to crank the fan speed during any of the testing, but I did want to measure the idle sound output, which looked like it was about 25 dBA, and the 100% fan speed was about 42.8 dBA. I measured these numbers with my cell phone and a sound meter app three feet away from the PC for at least 30 seconds. These numbers probably aren't super accurate, but what you're really looking for is the delta between the idle and the load. That's what's important. If you do need to crank up the fan speeds, you can. It'll cost you a little bit of noise, but if you're on the verge of overheating and losing clock speed, you're not gonna give up that much. GPU fan designs, I don't think 42 dBA for total system output with the GPU at 100% fan speed is really that bad. I don't even think you're really ever gonna need to run 100% fan speed on this card. Unless your ambient temperature is like 90 degrees Fahrenheit, or I think 28 Celsius-ish, somewhere around there. It's probably worth mentioning that this card does support a fan spin-down mode. If the GPU core goes under 50C, the fans will actually shut off. The LED will stay on though. They just won't spin up until the core hits 60 degrees Celsius again. PowerColor also says that these fans have an improved design that basically helps optimize the static pressure, bring in that cool air, and eject that hot air to keep optimal clock speeds. You can always flip this card into silent mode from the OC mode, but to be honest, when I get cards that have a silent and an OC mode, I almost never leave the OC mode. Now granted, some cards do get a little bit loud, but this RX 7600, the Hellhound model, definitely does not. We also have a fan color switch. You can pick what looks like it's basically a lighter blue or a purple color, but it's just one or the other. No addressable RGBs. The selection is limited, while the glowy colors are limited to just these two, I think they will actually go well with most builds if you have RGB in them. I did like that this card has a nicer backplate, in my opinion, I think the Hellhound branding actually looks good on it, so if you have a window, you could probably show it off. I would say overall that the PowerColor RX 7600 Hellhound GPU is a solid choice if you're looking at a 7600 class card. The only main issues that I have with the 7600s are, like I said, the half bandwidth PCI Express interface and the fact that AMD pretty much set the prices on these to be a little too high in my opinion. The Hellhound model is going for about $290 right now on Amazon at the time of this video, and the 7600 XT Hellhound is about 350 bucks. That being said, if you really want to buy new, I would recommend this Hellhound over the Fighter model from PowerColor. It only costs a couple more bucks, and I think it's a little bit of a better card. You're getting higher boost speeds and, of course, the uh, blue and purple. So yeah, this was my first GPU review. If you guys think I missed anything, or if you want to see other games covered, or any other tasks, um, you know, I edit videos in DaVinci Resolve. If you want to see stuff like that in the future, definitely let me know in the comment section. If you found this one helpful, toss a like on it. That'll let YouTube know to recommend this video to other people who are researching RX 7600s. If you're into home lab and gaming stuff, get subscribed to the channel and ring that bell for notifications. Until next time, keep on gaming.